let's have a look at how a mass spectrometer works. And we're going to focus in on the Bainbridge mass spectrometer. And it has four basic regions. It has an ionization region, an accelerating plates region, a velocity selector region, and then a region where the isotopes are separated. So that would be region four. So essentially what happens is you've got a bunch of atoms. They're all the same element. They go through an ionization process, so they've all got the same charge. But of course, we've got some different isotopes in there, and that means we've got some different masses. Now, these charges are put through some accelerating plates. That's going to give them some kinetic energy, some speed. And they're going to have a fairly wide range of speeds. However, when they come into this velocity selector region, or speed selector region, which consists of crossed electric and magnetic fields, what happens is that if the particles are either going too fast or too slow, they'll miss the opening on the other side. So they have to be going at exactly the right speed to make it through into this fourth region. So in this region here, we're just nailing down that speed. So it's essentially at a constant value. And then in the last region, the magnetic fields will separate the different isotopes. Let's take a look at that second region in which the ions are being accelerated across some plates with some voltage across them. So they're going to enter some hole on this plate and then they'll exit a hole on the other plate. Now assuming that the ions come into that first plate with zero velocity, which won't necessarily be the case, but assuming it is, we can work out how much speed those ions are going to gain as they cross the plates. So their increase in kinetic energy, assuming they start from rest, would be a half mv squared. And that's coming from a loss in electric potential energy, which would be given by the, the charge on the ions times the voltage that they're accelerated through. If we do a little bit of rearranging, we can solve for the speed at the far side of the plates, and that'll be given by q, 2q delta v divided by m. So the speed over on this side is going to be v if they started from zero speed. So the speed that we just calculated, that assumes the ions entered with zero speed. Not necessarily the truth. There will be a small range of speeds coming out this side of the plate. Let's take a look at the third region of the mass spectrometer, which is called the speed selector. So we've got this, we've got the positive ions coming in, and they've got a narrow range of speeds. They enter the hole here, and there's parallel plates creating a vertical electric field. So let's say that we've got a positive plate up here, positive voltage connected to, the, to that plate, and a negative plate down here. Then, of course, these positive charges are going to experience a downwards electric force. Now, if we were to also have a magnetic force, and we made that magnetic force upwards, then potentially those two forces could cancel out. But what's really neat is the magnetic force, it depends on speed. The magnetic force is given by QVB. So what we can basically do is select our speed so that it works like this. If our speed is too great, then the magnetic force is going to be bigger. And what's going to happen is the particles are going to deflected, be deflected upwards if they're going too fast. And if they're going too slow, of course, they're going to be deflected downwards because the electric field's going to be bigger. And it's only if the two forces are exactly equal that they're going to make it through this hole here and enter the next region, region 4 of the mass spectrometer. Now, if we want these two forces to be equal, then that QVB, the magnetic force, would have to equal Q times E, the electric force. So we can say that QVB equals QE if we've got just the right speed. Qs, of course, cancel out. So what we get is that the speed must be equal to the electric field divided by the magnetic field. And so the way we select the speed that we want is we typically keep that magnetic field fixed and we vary the electric field so that we get exactly the speed that we want. So we're going to select the speed that we want to go through. Now, of course, in terms of what direction will our magnetic field be in, uh, we're going to use the hand rule, of course. The, the particles are moving 
to the right. So if we point our fingers to the right in the direction that they're moving, and we want our palm to go in the direction of the magnetic field such that we're going to get a force in the direction our thumb points, which is upwards. Now, if you use your right hand, that will mean we've got a magnetic field that goes into the board. So we'd like a magnetic field that goes into the board inside the velocity selector region. And what that now means is that we're going to know how fast these particles are going when they enter that fourth region of the mass spectrometer. Now these ions that all now have the same speed enter a uniform magnetic field region which of course causes a uniform circular motion for those ions and we can we know the only force that's acting is that magnetic force QVB and that has to equal the net force for uniform circular motion which is that mv squared over r. We can then write that the radius must be equal to mv squared divided by QVB. And we can cancel out a V and we get the expression that R must be equal to the mass times V over QB. I separated V and QB because we know those are all constants. So that the radius will simply be proportional to the mass and these numbers here, these constants here, will all be known. And that means that we're going to be able to calculate by measuring the radius, we're going to be able to calculate the mass of those ions. So this mass spectrometer serves a very useful purpose. Not only does it measure the mass of the different isotopes, but it also allows us to separate those isotopes, and it means we're going to be able to make samples that are purely of one type of isotope using the idea of a mass spectrometer. Okay, I have a few IB questions for you here. Read over the question, try it out, and then come back for the answer. So hopefully in this question you said that you can measure the mass of ions using a mass spectrometer. So the key idea in this question is that these other, these other options, an isotope, a molecule, and an atom, they don't necessarily have charge. So we have to have charge to measure mass in a mass spectrometer. Okay, a second question. Pause the video, try it out, and then come back for the answer. And hopefully you said A, and the reason for that is that you've got an electric field that's pointing this way in the speed selector region. That means you have to have a magnetic force that's pushing the other way. And so if we're using, uh, we've got positive ions, and that means we can use our right hand. Your hand should do this type of thing so that we'd have a force going in this direction. You've got the particles moving in this direction and your palm should be facing outwards if you do that. And that means that uh, B1 has to be out of the page. Now as it comes in here we're still pushing the same way and so we'd use the same hand rule in the same way and the magnetic field once again has to be out of the page. And that's all for today folks. Thank you very much.